Hello, how are you? My name is Darren and welcome. Today we'll be talking about aortic Doppler. Um, there are times you would have to do an aortic Doppler on a patient, one, to rule out aneurysm, two, for aortic dissection, three, a patient with a recent endograft placement for aortic repair, uh, four, even looking at a renal artery uh, duplex, you would have to screen through the aorta first. And um, another indication would be when doing an arterial leg Doppler, when you do notice uh, an abnormal waveform in the femoral artery, um, you would have to go a little higher to kind of locate the area of stenosis. Um, this would require you to take a look at the iliac vessels and also the aorta. So today I have a very young model with me here, and today we're taking a look at uh, aorta. I'm going to start all the way at the proximal segment. And as you can see, I'm all the way at the proximal segment. Usually your aorta runs right in the mid-abdomen there. And just looking at this segment and following it down, you should be able to track your aorta all the way down, okay? Let's, um, looking at my screen here, you can see uh, inferior vena cava, the IVC. You can see the proximal aorta. As I come down that proximal aorta, you can see her um, celiac taking off right at that segment. That's a celiac artery. Um, as I come down, you can see the SMA, your superior mesenteric artery. And as I slowly come further down, you can see your right renal artery uh, taking off. If I put color on that, I'm sure you'll be able to uh, appreciate um, that right renal artery. And you can see the right taking off on that side and the left taking off as well. I'm going to take the color off. Um, and I'm just going to keep following that aorta all the way down. I'm going to follow the aorta down. And as I'm going down the abdomen, I'm right at the level of the umbilicus. I'm going to keep going until I see my bifurcation. And you can see the bifurcation right at that segment. I'm going to put color on it again so you can um, appreciate uh, the, the bifurcation. And you can see that also um, in that image. I'm going to take color back off. Now I'm going to go back to our proximal abdomen. If you can take a look at the abdomen here. I'm right at the proximal abdomen again. And when you measure your aorta, you have to measure outer to outer. Um, again, looking at my screen, I'm at a transverse segment of the aorta here. And I'm just going to freeze that image here. And I'm going to measure the uh, proximal segment of the aorta. When you measure again, you're measuring it from the outer to the outer. Okay, so that's the proximal aorta in a transverse image. I'm going to unfreeze that. And I'm going to take it in a sagittal image now. And I'm going to just turn right away from my proximal um, transverse image to my sagittal image. I'm gonna freeze that again, right at the proximal there. And I'm going to again, measure my aorta. And again, I'm gonna measure it from outer to outer. You wanna get all the walls in that image. And I just did a proximal uh, aorta measurement in a sagittal view, and I've also taken a transverse view. I'm going to unfreeze it. Also right at this level, what I usually do right away is just go ahead and get my waveforms of the proximal aorta. And um, that's my proximal aorta. And that's the velocity. I'm going to freeze that. And that's proximal aortic velocity. I'm going to unfreeze. While I'm in this segment, another thing I usually do is just go right ahead and dry, uh, do my mid segment. Again, you have to, as you scan, you have to rock your probe. Um, and the reason you rock your probe when you're scanning is you want to try to be as parallel to the vessel as much as possible. So I'm going to um, get, go back again to my screen here. And you can see that now I am rocking my probe to keep that uh, the angle as parallel to the vessel as much as possible, keeping it at a 60 degree angle. And I'm going to go ahead and um, get that um, velocity of the mid aorta. Now that's my mid aorta, okay? And I'm going to come out of pulse wave again. And at this point, I'm going to rock the probe back again over. And I'm going to get a mid sagittal view of my aorta. Okay. And again, I'm going to measure. I'm going to do an outer to outer measurement of the aorta. That's the sagittal measurement of my mid aorta. I'm going to unfreeze that. And I'm going to go transverse again. I try to... Um, just keep it in view and turn right away on it. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and measure again. That's my transverse image of my mid aorta. And I'm going to keep coming down. Now I'm going to the distal segment. That's my distal segment. I'm going to adjust my depth. Okay. That's my distal segment of the aorta in a transverse view. I'm going to freeze that again. I'm going to measure it. That's your transverse distal aorta. All right, and that's about 1.3 cm. 
I'm going to unfreeze it again. I'm going to turn right on that distal segment. And I'm going to go ahead and get a sagittal measurement of my distal aorta. And again, outer to outer. All right, that's my distal aortic measurement. I'm going to unfreeze again. And at this time again, I'm going to get another distal adapter of the distal aorta, okay? And again, it's very important that you rock your probe to try to keep your vessel as parallel as possible when you're scanning um, so that you can get good angle on your, uh, on your images, okay? Now I'm done with the proximal, mid, and distal segment of the aorta. I have also um, gone ahead and um, got, uh, uh, take velocities. I'm going to work on my right and left common iliac artery. And as you get to the umbilicus, the level of the belly button, you would see your iliac split. And as you can see it on my screen here, you can see it split. Um, and you can see the right and the left. Now, another good way to get it on the belly sometimes on certain patients is go below the um, umbilicus. Go below the belly button, okay? And as you go below the belly button, you want to just push down on the belly and angle towards the patient's head. And as you do that, you can see the iliacs coming in, okay? And as you can see on my um, image here, this is me below the belly button. And as I push up towards the head, I can see my right iliac and my left iliac artery slowly coming in. I'm going to put color on it so you can appreciate that. And you can see it right there. I'm going to take color off again. I, I don't really like scanning with color. But what I also do at this segment is I go ahead and measure my right common iliac artery transverse and I go ahead and measure my left common iliac artery as well transverse all in that one view again you can do it differently um, depending on your um, on your clinicals or um, department of protocol and then what I do again at this time is I'm looking at the right vessel right here I can see it I keep it in view again and slowly turn on it it's hard to appreciate it in that view so I'm going to put color on it um, this study has been done late in the day so it's a little um, she's a little gassy um, and you can see, actually, you can actually see the common iliac artery. You can see the internal iliac artery also coming in view also at that segment. And at this point as well, you can go ahead and Doppler the images. You want to do that for your right side and you want to do that for your left side. If you have any questions regarding what we just did today, please feel free to contact me at info at divinescanning.com info at divinescanning.com. You can also visit my website at www.divinescanning.com. I, I also have this book here on Amazon, Vascular Technology Made Simple. It is available on Amazon and it's also available on my website at www.divinescanning.com slash shop. I also have a new uh, physics um, review book that just came out. It's a very small book. Um, with physics protocols and uh, physics um, formulas that you would need when studying for the registry uh, for the SPI. This is only available on my website at www.divinescanning.com. Thank you so much and have a great one.